Bonjour mes amis, my name is Freya, and today in The Sapling we are going to be trying to model adaptive radiation. If you don't know what that means, it's basically the idea that one species can radiate into a bunch of different species to adapt to different environmental conditions. The most famous example of this is when Charles Darwin went to the Galapagos, he discovered that the finches in the islands had different beak shapes according to the food types that were available on those islands. So I'm going to raise up the ocean height until we get distinct island masses, and I'm going to pick two nice big islands to try this on. All else being equal, I know you guys are eager for me to try out the wildfire stuff. I really don't like changing too many variables at a time. I am a scientist, let's go. This episode wound up being a lot of trial and error. If you just want to see the adaptive radiation model, feel free to skip ahead to the indicated timestamp. Otherwise, enjoy watching me try to figure out where all the problems in my experiment are. Now, obviously the sapling is still in the development stage. It's got some aspects to it that are still pretty basic, so there's not much that I can really do except change the food difficulty, if that makes sense. Like, I could change the toxins and stuff, but that's not fun to watch. If I change how hard it is to get the food, like if I put spikes around it that will hurt you, then animals might develop armor so they can withstand that, and I think that'll be cool. So we'll need like a basic starter plant that's really, really easy to work with. And I'm going to have the fruit be low to the ground this time. Thank you to all those of you who pointed out that my blue cow things were probably dying off because they couldn't reach the fruit. Um, yeah, I hadn't even considered that. I know it's been mentioned before that that's a thing, but I just, I totally spaced on it. Okay, so this is our starter plant, nice and easy. Now we're going to- I can't mutate something recently introduced. Let me- let me wait a bit. What do you mean it went extinct? I'm looking at it. 300 natural and negative 220 recently introduced. Alright, sure. So let's make this plant play hard to get. I hope that stray leaf stuck over there doesn't cause me any problems. I'm gonna move these- nah, I won't move them up. I won't move them up, I will resist the temptation. To move them up. Alright, I'm putting these spikes right there, right where the fruit is. And we'll see if that makes it harder for animals. I'll even put these other, more deadly spikes just underneath it. Perfect. If you've played the game more than I have, you're probably yelling at your screen right now that the spikes won't actually affect how hard it is to eat the fruit itself, making this a pretty bad way to demonstrate adaptive radiation. Indeed, everything specializes for the fruit by the end of this, so I wind up trying it again. Let's skip ahead. Huh. Okay, so hooked orange beak reigns supreme. But the red ones also have some with the original beak, whereas the blue ones have all switched to the hooked orange beak. That's interesting and not at all what I would have predicted. Okay, let me try something else. I'm gonna wipe out everything. I'm going to wipe out the danger plant. I'm gonna modify the nice plant one more time. And I am going to change the food type. Now, this is what I should have done from the beginning, especially since I used Darwin's finches as an example. To this, which is harder to eat. These animals, they keep coming back. I guess hitting the exterminate button doesn't kill the eggs? That would be my best guess. Or maybe they're displaying as alive when they're really not, because they keep popping up in the same numbers they did previously. Tell me something, game. Can you actually find me one of these? I think they're a myth. 
I don't think they're really there. Do you see any of them? I don't. I think we're being lied to. Yeah, I'm just gonna proceed as planned, but I'm gonna use different colors. So, purple is the new blue. I think I figured out why everything adapted to have the hooked orange beak, by the way. I was taking a look at it in the creature editor, and um, the orange beak has heat loss as a thing. And at least on the Blue Island, much of it was uninhabitable in the beginning due to how hot it was. Anyway, what's the new red? We already had yellow, so that'll get confusing, so the new red has to be green. Purple and green, just like an eggplant. And they'll blend right in with the plants and not confuse me at all. No mutations? Let's give it 250 to establish. No! Where did you go? Oh, you know what? That beak couldn't eat the seeds to begin with. I was hoping it would mutate fast enough by um, just managing to scavenge the leaves, but the leaves might have been too tall. The purples are doing fine, though. Let's mutate the purples. Again. Okay, so we need to give it something that can at least digest the seeds. And the, the hooked beak did great on the blue island. We already know that. But it only digests kind of the seeds on the red island. Now, I don't actually know if this can evolve into this right away, or if it has to go backwards and then like that. I've seen some pretty extreme changes, so I'm gonna guess that it can just jump across. Either way, we'll have to replace both species. Okay. Now let's mutate that. Well, no, let's first exterminate the old one. Now mutate that one. And green is the new red. Okay. 250 to establish. No, what happened this time? Oh, did you eat all the plants? They were too good at eating seeds. Yeah, they ate them all <laughs> and then died out. We are learning some harsh realities about carrying capacity. Okay, what if, just really, really high up so they can't reach it, you produce one final seed? <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Let's try that again. Wait a minute, hang on. I was powering through these. And I found this guy and this guy, and they got three snack sacks! The power they must hold! Alright. Let's try this fella again. Two hundred fifty to establish. Fingers crossed. No. Okay. The plants are still around. What happened to you? Mostly starved to death. Why? You can eat seeds! Maybe I should give it time for the plants to establish a little bit better first. What's wrong with here? Softness and temperature. Can I modify the plant to be a little hardier? Alright. Let's try this again. Groundwater. Now the problem is groundwater. So I need these roots to be more water resistant? I can't do that. Okay. How about these? Okay, okay. Much more promising. Establish the plants. Let's try you again. 250 years to establish. Can you do it? Yes! Yes! Wonderful! Oh, that's what I like to see. 
Okay, so we're going to ignore the creatures that pretend to be alive. So the reds and the yellows. They're not really there. They're not really real. Only Dartatops and Botomatus are real. And they are functionally identical, different only in color. Let's get those mutations back on. 500 years. Interesting. Interesting. So you remember how I had to do the experiment over again because the original beak wasn't working? Well, apparently it works now. It looks like the purple ones are becoming taller. Let's keep going. Wow, the original beak is actually still working. What was the problem? Either way, I guess we'll see how those mutations change over time. Let's give it a thousand. One of the purples has turned blue when I explicitly said that purple was the new blue. Or, or were you green? You were green! Green turned blue! Oh, they're trying to trick me. Can I just exterminate it? Because it's going to confuse me later. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Because, like, the yellows completely took over before. New beak shape for the greens. Look at you! Ah, look at you go! Oh! You remind me of the ibis that I saw in the Galapagos. Only in beak shape. Oh man, look at him go! Oh, we're Darwin it up! Oh, you died! Oh no, you didn't! Wait, well, what happened? Hang on, hang on. Huh? Oh well. I have no clue what happened. Oh, there's just a piece of meat next to you. Okay, okay. Okay, so we've got like an ibis looking beak, and the original beak among the greens. The purples have mostly kept the hooked orange beak. Let's give it another thousand. Ooh, yet another beak shape, I think. Yeah, that is different from the hooked orange one. Oh, and you've got spots now! And, and little nubbins. Okay, so that one? Uh, regular herbivore looking mouth. Oh, instead of adapting to better consume the seeds, this one adapted to eat the stems. This guy became an omnivore. Maybe that's why the original beak is still doing okay. Uh, they mutated to form the original beak so they could prey on the ones with the hooked orange beak. Okay, I feel- I feel better about that experiment from before failing. And you know what? I think the reason why the purples kept the hooked orange beak and haven't deviated from it is because it is necessary. The hooked orange beak, if you remember, gives heat loss. And much of this island is hot. So that's why we're seeing a sea of hooked orange beaks. Fantastic. Okay. Final stretch, gonna give it 5,000, then turn off mutations, and then 1,000 to settle, and then we'll take a look. Okay. Whoa! Wait, 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 wait! Do you have a second beak on your butt? You do! <laughs> and it's still the hooked orange one! Oh my god! Butt beaks! We got butt beaks! Mutations off! A thousand years. Let's go! What a time to be alive! This is the dawning of the age of the butt beaks. Yeah, we keep the butt beaks. Alright. Why are these so blurry? Huh. Well, not only do we keep the butt beaks, but they are the most prominent purple morphology. I am going to, um... Why is my game trying to gaslight me into thinking I forgot to put on my glasses? Thank you, that's much better. Okay, now let's take a look. Oh, we got yet another beak shape for the green ones. Very nice, okay. So, the greens have fallen into two prominent beak shapes. These little nubby brown ones, and those, um, 
not as hooked orange beaks. The ibis beaks seem to be totally gone. And not only have the purples really embraced the hooked orange beak, they seem to be completely dependent on it, and most of them have even developed a second one on their butt! Okay, that was a much more effective way of showing adaptive radiation than the first experiment I tried, so I'm glad I stuck around for a second round. But that's gonna do it for this video, so thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!